So in this video, we're going to be talking about unit circles that you have done in the past, except this time it involves domain restrictions and inverses. So for this first one, we have secant equals negative two, and we know that the inverse of secant is cosine. And so since if secant equals negative two, then cosine would equal negative one half, because you have to flip it. So now we just have a regular unit circle that we already know how to do with negative one half equaling cosines so that you know it's gonna be on this side of the circle. And so you know it's gonna be a 60 degree triangle on both sides. So you go like that. So that would equal two pi over three. And that one would equal four pi over three. And since the domain restriction allows both of these answers, both are correct. So you can go ahead and box both of them. So now we know that cosecant is equal to two over root three. So the inverse of cosecant is sine. And that would be sine equals root three over two. And so now it's just another regular unit circle. When since sine is positive, you know it's gonna be in the upper half of the circle and you know it's gonna have a six, it's gonna be a 60 degree triangle. So you're gonna go and make your triangles and you know that that's pi over three and that's two pi over three. And since the domain restriction allows both of these answers, <laughs> you can box, okay. <laughs> dang it. So for this one, we have secant equals negative one and since the inverse of secant is cos, cosine, you would do cosine also equals negative one because the inverse of negative one is also negative one. So then if you go to the unit circle, cosine equals negative one would be right here. And the answer to that one is pi. And since the domain restriction allows pi, you can box that as your answer. So for this one, before you can start the problem, you have to simplify it. So you would have to subtract the two root two on both sides. And since that cancels, you would have negative two cosecant equals, and then four minus two is two root twos. And then you still have a negative two over here that you have to get rid of. So you divide by negative two on both sides, canceling out that side. So now you just have cosecant equals those cancel negative root two, since the negative carried from that side to that side, and those two canceled. So now we have cosecant equals negative root two, and since the inverse of cosecant is sine, it would be sine equals negative one over root two. Now before you can go on, you need the square root as the numerator instead of the denominator. So you need to multiply the top and bottom by root two. That'll, can't, that'll make those two go to two, and those two go to root two. So now you have sine equals negative root two over two. Now you draw it just like a normal unit circle. So since sine is a negative, it's gonna be the bottom half of the circle. And since it's negative root two over two, you know that it's gonna be a 45 degree angle. And you know that the answers are going to have the denominator of four. And since that one's right there, it would be five pi over four, and that one would be seven pi over four. And the domain restriction doesn't cancel out any of them, so they're both answers. Okay, so just like the previous page, we're going to have to simplify this so that we can actually plot it on the unit circle. So our first step is going to be subtracting four root two from both sides. Okay, so now we are left with three cosecant equals negative three square root of two. And then to get the cosecant by itself, we're gonna divide both sides by three. And so now we have cosecant equals negative square root of two. Okay, and then just like we were doing in the problems before, we know that the inverse of cosecant is sine. So we're left with 
um, sine equals negative 1 over the square root of 2. Um, and now we're going to try and get this um, square root on the numerator instead, so it's more recognizable for us to put on the unit circle. So to do that, we're just going to multiply everything by square root of 2 over square root of 2. And now we have sine equals negative square root of 2 over the square root of 4, but it's actually just 2. And so we can recognize that as something we can easily plot on the unit circle. So where sine is negative would be these two. Um, and we know since it's square root of 2 over 2 that it's going to be um, a 45 triangle. So we can go ahead and draw that. Um, and so now we know that the answer is going to be 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. And then the last step is checking the domain restriction, which um, says that it has to be between 3 pi over 2, which is right here, and 2 pi, which is right here. So that means that anything outside of that domain restriction um, can't be part of the answer. So that cancels out our 5 pi over 4, and so our final answer for this is 7 pi over 4. Okay, so for this one, it says that cotangent is equal to 1. Um, cotangent can be seen as um, the inverse of tangent, or it can also be seen as cosine over sine. So um, now we know that if it's cosine over sine and it's equal to 1, we're going to have square root of 2 over 2 over square root of 2 over 2, where cosine equals square root 2 over 2 and sine equals square root 2 over 2. Um, and then this would simplify to 1, which is how I got this. Um, so in this case, when we're plotting it, it would be here and here, both 45 degree um, triangles. And it's also in this quadrant because this would be um, negative square root of 2 over negative square root of 2, which still simplifies to 1. So since we know that um, these are our triangles, we can just go ahead and solve them. So this is pi over 4, and this is 5 pi over 4. And then our last step would be to check the domain restriction, which says that it has to be between pi over 2 and 2 pi. So here's pi over 2 right at this point right here, and there's 2 pi, so it must be between these two points. And so automatically that's going to rule out quadrant 1, and we're going to be left with this triangle. So we're going to cross out the pi over 4, which is what this was, and box our final answer, which is 5 pi over 4. Okay, so now we're getting to the problems that um, say they are undefined. Undefined can also be seen as um, 1 over 0, because 0 can't go into 1. So when we're looking at A, uh, we know if it's undefined, seek it equals 1 over 0. Um, and then, just like we have done before, we are going to do the inverse of this. So that means cosine equals 0 over 1. We just flipped it which equals zero if we simplify that. So if cosine equals zero, that means our points are going to be at the top and off the, at the bottom of the unit circle because that's where cosine equals zero. And these points are equal to pi over two, which is this point right here, and three pi over two, which is this point right here. And we're going to take a look at our domain restriction. Um, says it has to be between 0 and 2 pi. Looks like we're good, and both of them are our answers. Okay, and so we're going to do the same thing with C for cotangent. Um, like I said before, cotangent is just the inverse of tangent. can also be seen as cosine over sine. So if it says that cotangent is undefined, that means that cosine over sine equals 1 over 0. So now that we know that, 
It means that our cosine is 1 or negative 1 over 0 because both of them would be undefined. So that would be our points here and here. So sine equals 0 here, and this would make cosine 1, and this one would make cosine negative 1. So now that we have our points, we can go ahead and um, write our answers. So this dot right here would be the same as 0 and 2 pi. And this answer right here would just be pi. And then we take a look at our domain restriction and it says that it has to be between 0 and 2 pi, not equal to. So that automatically rules out the 0 and 2 pi. And pi would be our final answer. Okay, so now that we've done some practice problems, we're just going to give you um, some extra practice problems that you can do by yourself. And then we're going to give you solutions. So try C, pause the video, and we'll give you the solution. Okay, so here's the solution, and your final answer is going to be 2 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Okay, so here is your second practice problem. And here's the solution to that, and the answers are pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. Okay, now here's your third practice problem. Pause the video and press play when you're ready for the solution. And here's the solution for that problem. The answer is 7 pi over 6. And here is your fourth and final practice problem. Pause and play when you're ready. And here's the solution to that problem. The answer is just pi. 